Okay, everybody. So hello and welcome to our very first evening virtual event hosted here by the Ireland chapter of the PMI. I'm Katrina Collins, the director of events, and we're here with you this evening to celebrate International Project Management Day. To do this, as you can see, we have an excellent MC and panel lined up for the event. We're going to kick off shortly, but before I hand over to Jackie Glynn, our chapter president, I want to say a few words about our Mintimeter poll. As always, we want to involve you in this discussion. We can't be together in the same space this evening, but we can share our insights. So please grab your phone or your tablet, open a browser and go to menti.com, enter the code that you see before you, 1635438. The panelists have put together a variety of questions for this evening's discussion to engage you in the conversation. Our MC will check in with the poll as she chats with the panelists throughout the evening. And you can also use the chat here on Zoom to pop any questions or comments that you have in. I'll be here in the background, checking the chat and keeping an eye on you for your inputs. So we'll pop up the Mentimeter poll every now and then up on the screen as we progress through the evening so that you can see the results for yourselves. Well, without further ado, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to hand over to you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you very much, Katrina. I really appreciate that. And welcome everybody to this uh, virtual panel discussion, a new departure for us. Um, today's uh, virtual panel discussion is sponsored by the Project Foundry. The Project Foundry um, are sponsoring tonight's event and they're experts in transformation and change, cloud, technology and delivery. And they focus on effectively bringing the, bridging the gap between delivery and strategy to ensure they always drive results for their clients. Um, today's uh, session is to engage you in a conversation. Um, I think we're all missing that networking element that we usually get at our chapter events in the Hilton. And I think today's uh, virtual discussion is an attempt to engage you in a conversation. So we at least try and get that human element back to our engagement with our members and our non-members. And without further ado, um, I'm going to wish you all a happy International Project Management Day. And I'm going to hand you over to our MC, Tara Lockery Grant. Thanks so much, Jackie. Thanks, Katrina. You're all very welcome, all 121 of you. And listen, Thursday evening, well done getting here. Yeah. And it's the school night. We're all sitting here. This is going to be a very informative and very informal chat. So relax, have that cup of tea or whatever you fancy yourself there and get any questions that you want in. You can do it either through the Mentimeter poll, which I absolutely love. I think we should all have them on all webinars. And if not, you can get a chat going there and Q and A's in. If you want them to be anonymous, no problem. Turn your name off, take your name off your camera there and your comments will come in as anonymous and we'll go through those. So as you can see there, there's one of the first Mentimeter uh, poll questions in there. Where in Ireland or the world are you joining us from today? So you can click in and we're gonna back reference those questions throughout the evening. So, I mean, what better way to celebrate as well International Project Management Day than finding out about the highs and the challenges of two people in particular uh, who have got um, their whole career journey is focused in this way. They've, their roots there have been completely different and yet similar and where they arrived to. So the road may have been different um, at the destination and uh, very, very similar. So we're going to be talking to Jackie in a minute um, about her role and her, her road to get there to be today as the president um, of the PMI and then to PwC partner. Phelan Harvey's road um, and career path today has been very different to Jackie's um, and there's some very interesting parts there that he'd like to share with, the, with us today. I think as well some of the key parts are not just to share the highs but also the challenges. Mark um, is really one of those people who I'm telling you you will not forget from walking away. The take-homes that you're going to have at the end of this are going to stay with you. That's a promise and there's going to be lots of energy in there too and um, which I think at this time of the evening it's great when we have that not just the learnings but the take-homes and the practical uh, in there too. So let's have a look there at, at that first Mentimeter poll get the Q&A, the questions in, and we promise, a bit of housekeeping, we will have you out at the very latest, a hard stop of 8.30, a, a goal maybe a little bit earlier. So Jackie, I think we should start off with, on International, on, on uh, International Project Management Day with the woman herself, who is the president of PMI, the Irish chapter. Jackie, your career to date has been, you would describe it as non-traditional. So can you tell us um, I, how, how you started out? 
I would. And certainly when I started my career in project management, I never would anticipate it holding the volunteer role that I do today, quite simply, and never entered my head. Um, but I, you know, for those that for those that know me, but those that don't know me, but just in a project management portfolio management program management capacity, I actually started my life as a technical programmer. I did a degree in computer science. And for the longest time into my early 30s, I was a programmer. I was a developer. I never wanted to do anything else. And um, it was in my early 30s and I kind of realized that I wanted to progress and I didn't really want to go down the whole route of that very, very technical route to CTO. Um, so I decided um, that I needed to have kind of a career change. Now, when I look back, it looks like it's strategic. You know, honestly, I made some awful cul-de-sac choices along the way, but there were some choices that were really good as well. And what I would say about cul-de-sac choices is with the benefit of hindsight at the time, I remember doing a couple of roles. I won't name and shame them, but thinking, oh, my God, what? why did I do that? But actually, I learned a lot from everything I've done. So it's never been wasted accumulation of experience. So I started off as that technical developer. Then I arrived in my early 30s and I really needed I wanted to get a career and I wanted to focus on management. And I made I did make a very conscious choice that I wanted to go into consulting. Um, which, you know, Phelan will probably laugh at, um, that I actually decided that what I wanted to do was build a career. And I thought um, a career consulting, at least a stint in consulting, would benefit me from a couple of things. One was in terms of giving me that broader depth of experience across organizations and industries, because whilst I'd worked in a couple of industries, I wanted a, a, a broader breadth. And also what I firmly believe, I mean, I think everybody should do a stint in consultancy. It gives you that ability to read organizations and understand what problems you're trying to so solve and how the organizational context fits with program, project, portfolio delivery. So that was what I wanted to get out of it. Um, and I certainly did get those things, but also what I did get along the way was that was where I first encountered my first professional development and project management where I did my PMP and I did my diploma in project management with uh, Ed Nocton's Institute of Project Management. And it was when I encountered that course, I think I found my passion up till then. I think it was just, I, I was ambitious. I wanted to progress and it was when I fell into that space by the opportunity afforded to me that I realized actually I really liked this because I liked I liked the change. I liked that you were involved in change and organization. I liked that it was not the same job all the time. And I liked that it involved people because obviously I like people, my communication skills are reasonable. So I thought it would bring all those things together. So um, in doing that diploma then, um, it really became obvious to me that even though I had managed projects and people, what I wanted to do was kind of get into more strategic program management. And I made a move that I uh, worked for a healthcare organization where I managed two strategic programs over a five year period. Um, and what that did for me, I suppose, it gave me that lifted me out of the IT space into the business space where I was looking at business transformation, where you're looking at all the cross functional aspects of a business and how the things you have to change in order to meet an objective. It was mm -hmm. a baptism of fire, I won't lie. It stressed me beyond belief the first couple of months. Um, but it was a really exciting time because you had that sense of purpose. And I probably ran teams of about up to 100 people on a program at that time. So it was really an engine. And during that process, because they were multi-million pound programs or Euro programs, and um, you had to set up a PMO to support them. So that was the other piece that I got from that was understanding PMOs and what I needed to do. The next, I suppose, uh, point I arrived at, I had a milestone in my head that I wanted to do a master's by a certain age. I'm not going to say what it is because it'll date me <laughs> because Phelan looks far too young for his career. So I'm not oh, going man. to do that. But I had a milestone in my head that I wanted to do a master's. And so I decided to do the master's in project management, the center of project management in the University of Limerick. And I'd have to say that was probably a really, really positive thing for me to do because um, what it enabled me to do was hang my experience around theory and gave me, I suppose, confidence in the language I could speak and how I could engage with senior leaders, I suppose, with confidence as opposed to, you know, like, how do I express that? So it was a real learning and understanding the experience I'd got to date and how it fitted in with the theory. But more importantly, there were two other things that it gave to me. So the first thing it gave me was a lifelong mentor. 
in the guise of uh, Terence O'Donnell, who was my supervisor for my thesis and has remained my mentor and lifelong friend. And the second thing it gave me was Terence actually set up the chapter with Joan Murphy, the first female president. So he brought me into that network of the PMI. So I had become a PMP, but I hadn't really got into the network. So all of a sudden I had framework of knowledge. I had a mentor, I had a network. And it made such a difference to, I suppose, where my head was in terms of what I'd like to achieve in my career, okay? So that sounds fantastic and it sounds like I planned it all. I didn't. It was something that occurred along the way and I, and I quickly understood that there are people that were thought leaders in the field that it was important to build relationships with, okay? Now, at the time that I did my master's, my daughter was very young. She was only three. And um, over the subsequent, I suppose, nine years or so, I focused very much on doing my job and raising my daughter. And, you know, to Terence's, you know, dismay, um, I lost the network I built, right? And um, I remember when I decided I was going to move on from the organization I was in, lifting my head above the parapet and say, okay, maybe I want a different role, you know, because I can do a little bit more because, you know, family responsibilities, you know, children are a little bit older and um, put my head above the parapet and no network. And it was like, what, what do I do now? So I reached out to my mentor again, who gave me, you know, the proverbial kick, and uh, I linked back into the chapter and I've been linked into the chapter and the PMI family ever since, okay? Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's not that people think, oh, I'll get jobs or whatever. Really it's you'll get conversations and people and then things may come from that. It isn't always a guarantee, you know, you'll meet someone and there's a role. So it is about building that relationship piece, okay? And so there were two things that I did then, obviously I reached out to my mentor and then clicked back into that PMI chapter attending sessions. We used to have them in the Hilton before COVID. We did at that time too. And meeting people who I suppose are like-minded individuals in terms of your career, project management, and being enthused by it, I suppose. Um, I suppose the other thing that I did at that point in time, and I think this is really, really important, um, and, I, and I say it to particularly um, to women who have a family who ask, you know, what should you do? Um, I was in a position where like it was the middle of the recession, 2008, 2009. So no organization was paying for professional development where I was. And so I had a mission that I would go to every breakfast seminar there was that was of interest to me that was free because it was free. And I would just, you know, meet people and see what happened. And I think I was on about my fifth one of those. And I distinctly remember that morning it was raining and there was something going on at home with my daughter and I got to the hotel and I was a bit like, oh God, what am I doing putting myself through this? But that actual single breakfast webinar, that fifth, five, fifth or sixth session was one that yielded really positive results for me in my career long term. So one of the things it did was um, at that session was Ed Nocton, one of my other mentors who is um, head of the Institute of Project Management where I had done my diploma and we had a conversation. We know lots of people in common, catching up, haven't seen in years, blah, blah, blah. And then out of the out of the blue, I just mentioned to Ed, I said, you know, if you're ever looking for new lectures, I'd love to give it a shot. Okay. That's simply what I said. Throw away comment and you know, conversation, never thought anything about it. Two weeks later, Ed rang me, said one of his lectures had let him down. Would I like to give it a go next week? So I really was just dumped in the deep end, put your money where your mouth is and um, del deliver that lecture, Fred and his team, uh, two weeks later, and then quickly progressed to being on his faculty and I've been lecturing with him for 11 years now, okay? The reason why I love lecturing, it's part of my network as well because it challenges your preconceptions of what you're doing with new blood coming in. And I see Phelan nodding because he's uh -huh. that I know. Um, because you challenge it, people, people who are new or who haven't got your experience, challenge your thought process and it makes you think on your feet and articulate what it is uh, you want to do. The second thing that that breakfast meeting gave me was, as I said, it was a, an hour long breakfast webinar. Um, obviously the objective of it was to, was it to sell was to sell a two day workshop, right? On PMOs, business driven PMOs. And I couldn't get um, support for doing that in my work at the time. Um, but 
faith somehow played a role because a day later I received a call from the organizer of the breakfast meeting to say, you know, names would be put in a hat and my name had been drawn out and I had I had gotten a two day seminar free uh, for the business driven PMO. Now that business, dri dri business driven PMO for people who know me, I'm a bit of a PMO head, was uh, held by Mark Price Perry, who's one of the leading thought leadership uh, people in PMOs worldwide. And um, it was brilliant because it helped me understand my previous PMO experience and also helped me consolidate actually this is an area I wouldn't mind specialising with. And indeed, as Mark knows, in my subsequent encounter, one of the roles I was in, um, some of that knowledge and um, his, I suppose, guidance and tutorship in terms of Mark Price Perry's thought leadership helped me secure those roles because I had lots of information for presentations, for framing how I'd approach a role and all of that kind of stuff. So so, so my, my message would be that it's your network, but it's talking to people because, you know, people and opportunities just come up in different, multitude of different ways that you'll never expect. Jackie, amazing. While we talk and I listen to you there, what a communicator. I think everybody listening would agree. All we had to do was point the mic and I could listen to you talking about that career journey. Uh, Katrina, if we can have a look even at the, the uh, Mentimeter poll, looking at the key characteristics people have chosen there for project managers. It's really interesting, Jackie. If you look at this. What does it say? Well, it, at the last time, unless it's completely changed since I last had a sneaky peek at it, communicate. <laughs> so 59% um, and then you have deliver at 14%, which is a very strong point that you, you've made and Phelan will also drive that home, building relationships, networking, how important that is. And also what you all have in, in common as well with Mark, Mark Donovan, is that lifelong learning the yes. need to continuously develop your career, which we will get to um, at, at when we come to Mark. And as I said, you will not forget his learnings. Um, also, Katrina, before I go back to Jackie, can we have a look at where everybody is in the world? You're all very welcome. I know it is very busy. I know some other people have joined us since we started. Very busy time around the world um, at the moment, as we know, uh, politically and otherwise. So where are people joining us from? Wow, Nigeria, Munich. Wow. Excellent. It's I, very important to point out that we have Limerick as well because the Munster. I was about to say Limerick and Clare as well, and Cork. Let's not forget the Republic of Cork. Mexico. Wow. Yeah. See, it's great. Germany. Also, we can't have Deutsch reden, wenn wir machen. <laughs> um, just, wanted to, just wanted to throw that in there. Um, but no, a couple of things as well, Jackie. I can looking at some questions that are coming into us. So you can put your questions in, obviously, to, ment uh, to the Mentimeter poll or also into chat there at the bottom. The mentorship, um, Jackie, yes. how, for people who are listening, some people are saying here they don't have one. How do you get one? So you, oh. you, you started to go into that a little bit there. But if you yeah. have some key pointers, have you ever had a mentor? 59% no here and 41% yes. And some others would like to get one. Uh, how do you do it? Okay, so for me, there's a, a couple of different, it depends on where you are in your career is what I really believe. So, I mean, in the chapter we've started, we did a, we just concluding a pilot on mentors and men, uh, with mentees. And I think at certain points in your career, a formal kind of mentor mentee match relationship is really good. But the answer to the question is your mentor and you will find each other because it is building that relationship. So when I first met Terence, it was when I was down at my interview to interview for the man. Masters. You know, I never for a woman thought that I would end up, you know, having such a great uh, close relationship with him and him being such a factor in a sounding board in my career. But I suppose we're very alike. He's very passionate about project management. He also, you know, was plugged into the whole project management community worldwide. I would consider him a thought leader in the field. In fact, he he uh, was awarded our Distinguished uh, Professional Award, the first one as part of the National Project Awards. So for me, you can have the formal piece that you can have in work. So you can, you know, and I'm sure Phelan will speak to this sometimes when you start as graduate programs, you might get a mentor or a buddy, etc. cetera. Um, when you start to progress to different phases of your career, you may have a more formal one. But really, I think you will find, if you start to network, you'll find that natural allegiance with someone. 
someone and there's that relationship where they're interested in what you do and you're interested in what they do and I just kind of I mean I don't think I ever sat down and said Terence would you be my mentor I don't think he formally ever said that to me either but by definition that's where it's arrived at over the years. Um, I think as well one of the other points is look we, we can't ignore Jackie you're the second female president of the PMI Irish chapter the recent data has come out as well as we know during covid again uh, the, uh, i've listened to olivia and michelle from the parenting institute talking about this fact that women have been shown to be the primary child carers and elder carers throughout the pandemic remote working or otherwise so it is relevant to bring this up are there extra challenges for female project managers that you have had to navigate your way through yourself you, you touched on your daughter earlier yeah. on well, I have thought long and hard about this and I've attended many, many panel sessions and Mark and Phelan will know I'm, I'm very authentic and truthful. And I would say there are challenges for women. I'd love to say there aren't. Um, I think the challenges are that um, you want to dedicate time to your family and that maybe there are things that you do in your household that, you know, maybe your partner doesn't do, et cetera, et cetera. But either way, it's a juggling, it's a juggling piece all the time. I think the challenge is to make your voice heard and to, to not actually step back from being a voice in the conversation. And that for me is really important. It doesn't matter what role you occupy, make your voice heard and your opinion is valid, okay? Um, I suppose the, from me, when I looked at the chapter piece, as I got involved in the leadership, you know, it became very interesting for me that the the first uh, the first president was a woman, Joan Murphy, a fantastic lady who was, you know, helped me out in my career somewhere along the way too. Um, and then we hadn't had a female president for 20 years. And I found that fascinating when I see in those 20 years, the demographics of the amount of female project managers in organizations has changed completely. I'm sure Phelan would agree that when I started first, like, you know, you were probably, you know, a lone voice in the wilderness of males. And as the last 20 years, there has been fantastic progress. Um, in project management but yet you don't see it at the more senior levels and you don't see it at the professional association levels so I suppose for me um my mentor kind of you know said to me you know would you not think about you know um looking at that role I didn't really jump at it to begin with but then I suppose for me I have a daughter and I'm very much into if you can't see it, you can't be it. So, you know, you have to put yourself out there. So then um, I kind of decided, yes, if I got the support, then I'd step into the role. And I have to say, from my perspective, it's another piece that adds to that professional development, that lifelong learner. What I discovered as doing that was, as being a chapter leader, you get plugged into the PMI Global Leadership uh, chapters and you go to uh, conferences and development things that you do. And I remember the first one I went to, I actually think I did an interview afterwards and somebody asked me what I did the weekend and I said, I was in London at a project management conference and they said, what's that like? And I said, it's with a leadership conference for PMI leaders. And they kind of looked at me and I said, it's a bit like Comic-Con for nerds who are project <laughs> managers. But when I was at that conference, I really <laughs> realized these are my tribe. This is this is people who are like-minded like me, and I didn't want to lose that. So I felt that if I got the support to become the president, that we try and engender that conversation, like come and be part of us, be part of our network. You know, we're here. And I think, you know, in testament to Katrina, I think we saw a huge uptake in our webinars once we pivoted during the first COVID lockdown. And I think it was that because actually I can take an hour once a week and be part of this tribe. There's loads of things going on that I can't control, but actually I can be part of this tribe and I can add a little bit of professional development for myself. So that's really why I decided to put myself forward for the role um, because of that, because I am a mom, I have a daughter. I think it's very important um, that that generation see that, you know, if you put your mind to something, you can do it. And hopefully I've brought some value to the role.
I love that. And I love the authenticity that you bring. And um, I met Jackie a while ago at, at a mentoring um, program and straight away you jumped out at that. And uh, my, my, my job is helping people tell their stories. That's what I love doing. And I love how honest and open and welcoming you've made the network. And each person when we, that we spoke, we, we, when we spoke getting ready for today, that message was very clear. It's a very welcoming network, a very welcoming community that you've developed. I think that's evident as well. As Katrina said from your previous previous webinars. Phelan, how are you? And Jackie, after listening to all your whole career there, there's definitely a portrait in the attic somewhere for you. And <laughs> Phelan definitely has one as well. Um, so Phelan, you've been with um, PwC for 19 years. Yes, I have named and changed you. So since <laughs> 2001, as Mark said, you started when you were 12. So <laughs> you've had what you might call a little bit more of a traditional role, a uh, road to project management, or at least to your partnership. Can you give us a little bit of an overview of that? Yeah, sure. Um, I, and I think, think you're right. Probably what would be considered a, a more traditional role now, but it's quite interesting when you go back 19, 20 years, not really at all traditional. There, there wasn't the pathway that, that, that is reasonably apparent to us all now, it just wasn't there at the time. Actually, project management was reasonably immature at the time. And I might come back to that point in a moment. But yeah, so so reason, reasonably traditional, a little bit different to Jackie. So I suppose two key differences. I think people grow up in projects either in a technology background or a business background. Um, I would have come from a, a business academic background and delivered projects throughout my career, which were more around business change. So uh, a business has a problem that they want solved or they're trying to change their organization, possibly growing, possibly closing, or possibly something in the middle where they're trying to capture an opportunity. So, so most of my projects would have been more in that business um, uh, arena. I suppose the other key difference is I pretty much worked in projects all my life, which is something you need to watch for when you're talking to your friends, because you know talking about an action or a critical path to your friends in the pub <laughs> is not a good idea. So I, 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 I do try to watch that, but, but I am indoctrinated in projects all, all my career. Um, and, and within that, I guess what is now a traditional route is I would have started out out of college and uh, joined, joined a, a large consultancy practice, PwC, and basically started as an analyst, worked in a project team and structure uh, and kind of almost would have done an apprenticeship, if you like. So you had, you, you, you had your academics and business and you um, got involved in projects and almost did an apprenticeship where, where you were in a team with other project managers. And basically, while many people on the, on the, on the, the panel, but indeed in, in the audience today, will recognize is what happens is you do some projects, you gain skills, suddenly you're getting a little bit more uh, responsibility, maybe you're leaving work streams instead of just being an analyst. Then, then you get your first project to manage and that's a big occasion for you. And, you know, uh, we're shocking all getting over that. But, you know, if you succeed in that project, then it tends to grow to, well, actually, let's give this guy or girl a, a, a kind of more complex project. Uh, maybe, maybe something that's, you, you know, a little harder to deliver or maybe something that's broken and they want you to go fix. Um, and basically, it spirals from that. And, and effectively, the career for a lot of people can be, just your projects keep getting harder and you get more of them. Uh, and, and, and that can be your career. Um, I, and I guess that would, would, would be something that, that I probably Jackie uh, there. Yep. recognize. Jackie's uh, but, but, but the flip side of it is um, it can be so, so rewarding. Uh, project management has been really, really good to me. I'm actually really passionate about the difference it makes in our organizations and in our, in our country. I think it is an amazing skill set. But through being the, the guy or girl who can deliver change, take people from something that's a bit of a mess or just not started and move it all the way over to the outcome and the business outcome that people want to achieve is a really, really popular skill set. And it gets you into really, really interesting rooms. So, you know, I've done amazing projects over the careers. I've helped clients open airport terminals. I've been around through banking crises in some extraordinary rooms as, you know, crises uh, were being managed, lots of mergers and acquisitions, opportunities to travel the world. And it's, it's off the back of the skill set that people believe 
you will uh, you will deliver for them. Uh, I suppose the only other thing I'd add, just in terms of bring up the current in 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 my in my career, is the other thing I noticed over the years is after you've been doing it a while, people are actually looking for project leaders, not project managers. Uh, and, and I thought it was very interesting, the communications point made a little earlier on the Mentimeter. Um, we, we actually ran a survey a, a while ago on what skills are CEOs looking for out of, out of project managers. And the two things that came up, which surprised me quite a lot, were stakeholder management and commercial skills. I expected they'd say be the most organized person in the room, you know, really thorough, good structure, all of that kind of things. But actually, there's a recognition in business now at this stage that uh, people who can deliver change through the methodologies that we all use and all learn as our trade is definitely recognized. Well, what was that second point? You mentioned their key stakeholder management. What was the second point you mentioned? Commercial, commerciality, so uh, an ability to kind of benefits realize, I guess, uh, Mark, but, but an, an ability to not just, you know, run a plan and run a Gantt chart and get to the end, but actually be heads up looking at it and seeing if actually we're achieving what we're meant to. Mm. That kind of ties into, and, and Mark um, highlighting that as well, kind of ties into that idea that you we spoke about where you're helping businesses not only project manage, but also define, mobilize, and manage the project to deliver the desired outcomes. So it's, that is another point that kind of Mark will be talking about in a little while, helping leaders follow through on their promises. Yes. And you have a question as well, um, Phelan, that you'd like to put to people. But but just before we get to that, your lifelong learning skills. You, you It's something, uh, just like Jackie, you've always upskilled, looking right through. If people connect with you on LinkedIn, they'll see that. And you're also a sharer of information through lecturing. So mm -hmm. is that something you also feel very passionate about? Not just learning yourself, but sharing it. Yeah, I I, I... As I said, I said a moment ago, I'd be quite passionate that what we do makes a difference. It mightn't be, you know, the, the, the most sexiest job description out there, but it is something that really, really makes a difference. And, I, and I'm quite passionate that it does. And I've also, back to the Darian Gray picture in the attic, yeah. I have been doing it for a little while and I have seen things really, really change. So when I started out, the project manager was the person who was given a project to manage. Uh, and sometimes they went well, and sometimes they didn't. Uh, and, you know, there was a bit of design and a bit of luck in that. But over the last 20 years, what has really, really matured is both the business recognition of what we do, but also the actual core skill set. So yeah. most of the people in this call will have got some technical training. Uh, Jackie and I happen to lecture. Uh, I think it's important to... You know, but it's not just to lecture, it's to get the word out there on how, how to do this effectively. Because I think there's a technical skill around this which is massively important. Uh, and I think that technical skill really ups the chances that your business will achieve what it wants to, to do. And we can teach that. And then I think the second part of it is, if you like, that's the science, Tara. But the second part of it is, there is, a, there is an art to this as well. And that requires experiential learning. It, it requires people to give their experiences back to the community or the tribe of project managers. So all of that things around stakeholder management, all the things around, you know, the politics of it, not getting caught. It's a very, very lonely role at times because you have a huge amount of responsibility and not always the authority to execute. So those communications, those stakeholder skills can be really, really, really important. And that requires you know, that tribe that Jack spoke about to, to, to kind of teach each other. And then I suppose the last thing is, you know, I've made a hell of a lot of mistakes. There's not a project manager that hasn't. <laughs> and it's good to share that, you know. Yeah, actually, that's really relevant. I know we have, thanks Katrina for sharing that with us, your question of how can a project manager own their career and be strategic in becoming a project leader? People can read some of the answers there, but not without listening to your answer on this, because I think Jackie has shared some of her challenges along the way. Phelan, again, like I said, when you read your your career path, it reads very clear and you've achieved always at the top of your game and um, at your various levels of study as well. Um, the challenges, though, 
Were yeah. there pivot moments for you? Because Jackie, we're <laughs> going to come back to your pivot moments. Look at her laughing there. We're going to come back to her pivot moments because I know Mark is is was instrumental in the middle of that. Um, so we'll come, we'll be coming to Mark now in a couple of minutes. But Phelan, for your own challenges there that you could share with us, some of your war stories, perhaps the pivot. Yeah, moment, really. Yeah, sure. So, so like th this might sound blindingly obvious, but it's really, really hard. The way to succeed in a career in project management is to deliver projects successfully because you know that that's the job description that sounds so easy but is so hard to do um, I, and i think the learnings you pick up over the years um, are very largely in the stakeholder management piece uh, and the ability to influence and become a project leader rather than somebody who's just running a process running a process will get you so far and it has its own value but actually that that inflection point to you know a really successful leadership career in projects is really around that that ability to read the politics the ability to influence stakeholders and the ability to get things done when your stakeholders at least half of them probably don't aren't with you, and you have to get them and bring them with you. Um, now, kind of the challenges on that, um, like I suppose a couple of things I would say I've learned over the years around challenges. If you can't get a project right at the outset, you probably never will. And if you have the toolbox and the skill set that you know how to set up a project, and you know how to define benefits, you know how to get the stakeholders lined up, you know how to, um, you know, discuss risks and issues in a mature way. If you're in an environment where that's all been swept to the side by more powerful stakeholders, walk away. You'll never succeed in that project. I, I, and I've learned that the hard way. And as a consultant, that's a very hard thing to do because, you know, A, it's a commercial entity and, you know, you want to work like everybody else. Uh, and also, secondly, you're kind of addicted to succeeding in projects and you want to fix things. But, but one of the big learnings I would have learned over the years is you probably know when a project's never going to succeed. And if you can't have that honest conversation with your stakeholders, um, you'll probably end up carrying them. Very honest, uh, very honest. And we're, we're going to come back to you both, Jackie and Phelan, in a little while once we talk to Mark about the importance of building your personal brand and the effect that that has had on your career. And um, before we do that, Katrina, can we have a look at the results for what people clicked on the Mentimeter for? Did they and have they ever used a business coach? I, it was in the 80s for no earlier, Mark's eyes. I could, I'd see them, yeah, um, 83. So I think that's a good place to bring in uh, Mark. Mark Donovan, who is your, your key role, if we had to sum it up in a line, um, is to help leaders deliver on their promise and do what they say they're gonna do. But Mark, if everyone else has a painting in the attic, you have two. When I listened and heard you and heard your life journey and your story to date, you blew me away. Um, and I think even that alone is, is reason to believe every single word that comes out of your mouth now. Can you give us a little bit of a, a background to what you have done and when you started at the tender age of, am I right, 14, 15? 15, yeah. Just let me... He's up, he's up. I he's told up, you guys, yeah. I told <laughs> you energy in the room. Here he is. Sorry guys, um, I, I, I just maybe want to start with one point here, um, you know, to link it back to why we're here today about the career move and you know getting getting the brand up and running and i would call that um you know getting your car out of the garage um i would have left school at 15 and i started doing a bakery apprenticeship uh in um in buttercrust baking fingers where i'm from and i probably quickly realized that that wasn't the career for me i mean it, you know i think the the cakes i made would make a sword swallow or a gag uh, i didn't fancy getting up at sort of four o'clock in the morning but at the time, I mean, jobs were very, very difficult to find. Um, anyway, I went back to night school, done my leave insert, and got my leave insert. And I was still thinking, you know, what am I going to do? What am I? What am I going to do uh, there? You know, and one of my uh, one of my night school lecturers said, you know, Mark, what, what, you know, what would energize you? What would focus you? What would excite you? And that really got me thinking. And, you know, people talk about vision and, and this purpose and all. What really excited me and focused me was, I don't know whether people remember, 
the film Wall Street in the 80s with Charlie Sheen. And for me, it was, you know, going to work with a lovely suit, short tie. Now, for some people in the room, that may seem, oh, wow. But for a guy that grew up with a very, very working class background, that sort of gave me, uh, you know, a vision to go for. To go for. And the point I want to make with getting the car out of the garage is, um, a lot of people, I mean, we've, and we've heard it earlier on, you know, some people say, how do I get from, you know, project manager to project leader? Well, to me, for most people, you know, that's a, imagine this is a garage, I mean, obviously I didn't do art school. This is a garage and a lot of people's car guys, they're stuck in the garage. You know, what, what am I going to do? If only I knew what I want to do, if only I really, you know, had that, I would go for it. Well, my view is, you know, pick, you know, pick something. It doesn't matter whether it's to go to, go to work in a suit, pick the project uh, leader role. But once you do that, your car gets out of the garage. And when your car is out of the garage, what happens then as you're going for this, other possibilities open up. Other poss possibilities happen. And for me, you know, to, to get to that wearing the suit uh, was, I went back then and started studying accountancy through night school. Uh, Qualified as an accountant, um, you know, through night school, finished your apprenticeship, qualified as an accountant, and then spent about 11 years in financial services. Now, I probably realized when I was in financial services that um, there are three types of people in the world, those that can count and those that uh, can count. But what I did discover was a passion for, for people potential, a passion for people potential. And my point again is, guys, getting that car out of the garage opens up the possibilities. And then that led me on then to 18 years ago, setting up my own um, consultancy company, which touch wood, I mean, of brilliant clients like Virgin Media, Baxter Healthcare, Tato, Fingal County Council, PRL, um, to work in something that I passionate about and really enjoy. So that first point really was, you know, to me is, is, is getting that car out of the garage. Don't wait for the perfect plan or the perfect opportunity. Put it out there and go for it. And it's amazing then how along that journey, you learn, you'll develop along the way. Mark, while we have you standing there, because I know you're, whether you're at your at that board, which uh, by the way, that car was very interesting um, artwork, but uh, yeah. getting that car out of the garage, I love that image. But talking to Jackie um, and Phelan, they might like to come in here on that. The importance of a personal brand for all the project managers who are watching today on um, International Project Management Day. So why is it important to have your personal brand? The networking, we both Phelan and Jackie have spoken about that. Why is it important and what difference has it made for you, Jackie, and for you, Phelan, um, on that mm -hmm. briefly, to have a personal brand? And then Mark, if you can jump in then and mm. explain to us how we get it. Yeah. Jackie. Oh, oh, I was about to say, do you want me to go first? Um, I think, um, I probably, sorry, probably to put it in context, I, I um, when I changed to a particular role, um, I was on one of the leadership programs that Mark uh, was the business coach on. Um, and I suppose um, through that sessions with Mark and the rest of the team that were on that, he talked a lot about brand. And I suppose from my perspective, I had started a little bit about that, but I suppose... I suppose you're a bit shy about it. You're kind of going like, well, you know, well, what have I got to say? Or, you know, what can I contribute? Uh, and I very quickly started to think, well, actually, I have as much to contribute as anybody else. And it is only a conversation you're starting. I'm not saying I'm an absolute expert in everything, but it's to start a conversation and engagement. So for me, um, the personal brand thing is about just about uh, getting out there to promote project management and that was part of the PMI uh, role and, and the, the role that I've taken on. Um, to promote thought leadership, I suppose, um, I like to think is that, that the PMI chapter is one of the thought leaders in the field in Ireland. And, you know, I like to post on the things that I see as interesting in terms of the thought leaders that I follow in this space, to, just to share. Again, it's about sharing that information. And I, and I also think that 
Um, when it comes to, uh, and, and I know Phelan has been with PwC, but when it comes to changing roles, I think it's very important that you have a LinkedIn presence and that it is obvious that you're engaged in the community that you're working in. So to give an example, about how the brand can work for you outside of just the engagement of from a, a role perspective or a new job perspective and um, I obviously you know post a fair bit or on LinkedIn and share knowledge or whatever or interesting things I see and um, but also um, one of the things that came my way was two years ago the PMO Global Alliance which is a, a, an incredible organization that promotes PMOs across the world a volunteer organization they reached out to me and asked me would I be one of their global judges on their PMO awards okay my first reaction was wow do I know enough to be a global judge was the first one and then went actually you know what I think I'll give this a shot now the most interesting thing for me was that whilst lots of people said to me oh my god you're spending time doing that why would you do that the interesting thing for me is because my brand is out there and they reached out, I, I just learned so much from reviewing 20, 30 PMOs across different industries across the world. Mm -hmm. Like it's a consultant's delight, uh, Phelan. You know, you're looking right across the industries and you're looking at the different types of PMOs and where they're strategic, where they're more operational, how they apply digital technology. It's just an amazing experience. And I think that's why your brand is important because it's another way of, I suppose, opportunities coming to you. So I would have um, I would have been a judge for the last two years in the PMO Global Awards. I'm glad to say the people I had earmarked to win this year did actually win. They were astonishing. Um, and Excellent. I also was a judge on the South African Awards. So I think it's just part of that, that you have your brand out there and, and people will engage with you and then you know, it's a it's a reciprocal thing because you then you get more knowledge, you get to participate, and that's what it's about. It's about participation. That's Excellent. what it means for me. Excellent. And I hope when you hit that cul-de-sac that you spoke about or that people can, yeah. you know, when you hit cul-de-sacs that you at one stage were working with Mark, which we'll get to in a second about how he how he works with people um, and the benefit of having a Mark in your life, the benefit of having that business coach and business uh, leadership development work done to get to the next stage. Phelan, so being... As yeah, there's the a point I'd like to make, and it might, it might be a little provocative, but I... So, so like, like I, I run a function that has 70 project managers, that, that's part of, part of my business, part of my, my business responsibility. As part of that, I actually think it's, well, firstly, it's a paramount importance that you develop a personal brand. It is one of the key ways you succeed. You need a network, you need the relationships to succeed, even in your own organization or in a wider organization like Jackie's story. But just to be a little provocative, I think project management is a discipline that lives in the urgent and the important. So if you know that classic time management quadrant, yeah. you know, where you have urgent, not urgent, important, not important. Yeah. I think project managers, by their very nature, the fact that they're working on plans, they're working on projects, deadline driven all day long, tend to live their lives in the urgent and important quadrant. The problem with that is the important but not urgent gets neglected. And building a brand is very important, but when you wake up on a cold, wet Tuesday, probably not the most important thing you have to do in the day. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's what makes for a successful career, but actually it's what makes for a more enjoyable career and a more rewarding career as well in terms of the self-actualization of building the brand, but also the network that that brings. But just one thing I'd like to throw in the mix is, like, I love the community of project managers. I think we make a huge difference but I don't think we do ourselves any favours around personal brand. I, I think I, I would see other disciplines that I, that I work with and I have in, 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 in my teams that probably are much more focused on this. We couldn't have a better introduction to you, back to you, Mark, and to that flip chart. You're not, you want to insist that we don't leave today without three key points around personal brand that is something you believe in and talk about every day. Can you talk us through that? Some take homes for people listening, following on from what Jackie and Phelan said. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, to me, um, personal brand, it, the, the, there's four key segments, and they're not, they, they, this is not a, you know, you got to follow the, this step. I mean, you can work on all of these separately but they need to come together. First one I said, guys, is, is getting the car out of the garage. As I said there, guys, having something that excites you and energizes you, you know, because that's the why of developing the personal brands. The second bit is, what do you get when you get me? 
And I mean, the guys were talking there about the, the personal brand, but I mean, the biggest thing to me the personal brand gives is confidence. When you walk into a room, you know, when you know your personal brand, what you get with Mark Donovan is this. You don't get this or you don't get this, you get this. And to me, that confidence that gives, which is, what do you get when you get me? And that's where we got to do some work on ourselves. What are our strengths? What skills do we have? What talents do we have that are innate to us? You know, what comes easy? And a big part that people forget about is, you know, what, um, what are our accomplishments? What have we achieved? I mean, I'm working with a, I'm working with a, a lady there last year. And, we're, you know, we're covering a lot of this. And at the break, she sort of comes to me. She said, Mark, she said, I don't have any real, you know, I don't have any real strengths. I mean, I've, I've never done anything, she said. You know, it was, you know, literally, you know, I was a, um, you know, a single mother at 18, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and I said, well, you know, what, what have you done in the last 10 years? And she said, well, yeah, I went back to school and she said, well, I, um, I developed, uh, you, know, you know, raised my son on my own. He turned out to be great. So to me, that's drive, determination, resilience. So people, a lot of people undervalue what they have and overvalue what they don't. The third one is here is holding up the mirror. And that is, you know, what do other people see as their, you know, th that we maybe don't? That's positives and negatives. You now, what strengths do they see in us? You know, how would they recommend us if they were talking about somebody else? So I would do a lot of work with my clients around getting feedback from their key stakeholders on what they see as their strengths, what they bring, what they don't bring to the party. And the fourth one here, guys, is the key stakeholders. And I think Phelan spoke about that, which is who are the key group of people that you need to influence? And a lot of people that I come across, they have a problem with self-promotion. Mm -hmm. But as a wise man once taught me, you know, if we don't self-promote, something terrible happens. And that's nothing. Yeah. So to me, guys, a lot, of, a lot of the steps here, guys, you know, as I said, they're not sequential. You can work on this, 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 and this. But to me, that's what brings. But the biggest thing of all, and I have here, you know, what's the roadblocks to our career and brand success? The biggest one that I see is a lack of self-belief in people. And what a personal brand is, a personal brand gives us that self-belief and confidence in ourselves. Doesn't happen overnight, guys. You know, doesn't happen overnight. But that is, and when I work with a lot of people, it is about, you know, helping them keep the word, helping them to see the strengths, the talents, and holding them accountable to deliver on them consistently. Mark, it's while well, you're taking your chair, the old Oscar Wilde line, there's only one thing worse than being talked about, and that's not being talked about. <laughs> yeah. The self-promotion. The questions are flying in there, and we're going to come to them now um, in about six minutes' time. So keep them coming in, guys, because we'll fly through them in a minute. But Mark, just to work on from that, I mean, what a gift that is for everyone listening, if they take home from this, is to start looking at that. Jackie has highlighted it, Phelan has highlighted it the need when you're so busy in your project representing the companies that you're working for or your own company and um, the lack of uh, time possibly to personal brand. What sort of time commitment is needed in this? Where do people start? Is it a knock on your door? What is it? I think they start again. To me, I'll go back to that point again. They start by, you know, unless you've got something that's going to energize you, focus you and excite you, well, then you're not going to put the work in Tara because then it's, it's like it's work. So to me, it's finding, you know, you know, my, the first question that I ask people is, you know, what is it? What is it that you want to achieve in the long term? And that goes back to a question come up there about someone that maybe wants to be a project, uh, a project leader. So if that's what you want then to start. Well, then what do you need to do to get there? You know, what skills do you need to build? What's already in the toolbox? But if that doesn't excite you or energize you, well, then you're not going to put the effort in. You know, this is and it's one percent today. There's no, you know, no one's going to be build a, project, a personal brand tomorrow based on this. It's 1% a day of continually looking at, I think, the four questions that are, that are behind me there. I love it. We can't ignore that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Jackie, you mentioned earlier when you hit that cul-de-sac for people who feel that they're there at the moment. Networking opportunities are trickier than they used to be. You guys have kept up this through the webinars. You've kept your network going. Jackie, what was it that changed for you when you started looking at your personal brand, which has ended up with you being where you are now in terms of your day-to-day -day work and also as president of the BMI? What was it with working with Mark? What changed? 
Um, it was it was um, meeting Mark Donovan and him holding the mirror up to be changed. Mm. Um, I was on a leadership program. Um, I don't mind sharing some of the detail. And um, as part of what Mark has just described, you know, about, you know, my car was definitely in the garage, you know, it was like, <laughs> yeah, this is where I'm at. Mm. You know, I'm fine. I'm grand. You know, I'm fine. I'm grand. And then Mark pretty much put the mirror up to me and said, like, what are you doing? You know, you know, what skills do you have? You know, do you realize this? Do you realize, I suppose it gave me some good feedback. Do you realize um, how you are perceived or, you know, in a room, how you work, how how your brand comes out in a room, all things. I mean, to be honest, when people talk about brand, I, I always was a bit cringy about it before. Um, and I think Terence O'Donnell has made a great point in the chat there. You know, there's a self-assuredness that isn't a cockiness. Nobody wants to be cocky. If you're cocky, your brand is gone. There's a self-assuredness about the knowledge you have with a willingness to learn from other people and their knowledge and to, you know, collaborate and co-create. So for me, what changed was I definitely was in the garage. Um, I'd been out of the garage along the way, but I put my car in the garage and I was grand and I was fine until I, that encounter with Mark on a leadership program. And he made me think a lot about um, what was I doing? Was this really what I wanted? And um, I have to say, he made me draw that X box for myself. Mm. And um, yeah, that started a whole, uh, a whole series of events that led me to where I am today. Excellent. Could I just, could I just make one point there? Yeah. Um, to me, uh, too many of us, oops. too many of us go through our careers wanting to be liked rather than respected. And I think that's a big, big, big block that I see. And I work with CEOs, vice presidents, um, you know, senior leaders, middle leaders. I mean, I cover the very same things just when I'm working with CEOs, I tell them I'm doing CEO stuff. Um, but to me, this is a big one, guys. A lot of us go around, we want to be liked rather than respected. Now, to me, we can have both. And ideally, we want to have both. But there are certain people that we come across in our careers that it is an either or. And we've got to put the tools in place to, to make sure that we can deal with this. But a lot of us, to me, we want to be liked rather than we want to be respected. Love that. I see nodding going on there at the same time. I love that, Mark. Um, Katrina, before we move into our questions, did you want to put up our latest uh, responses to the Mentimeter poll? And we'll see where we're at there. Um, and while that's being popped up, uh, I am looking at some questions flying in here, which is great. Thank you, everybody. We're going to come to those now in a minute. So let's have a look um, at this was, I think, am I right in saying... Um, one of your questions, Mark, why do you think, what do you think is the biggest excuse people use in creating, in, what do you think is the biggest excuse people use in creating a personal, for not creating a personal brand? Yeah, for not creating a personal brand. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Mark, have a look through some of these answers. Um, are, these, are these lining with what you would have expected to see there? Definitely, yeah. And I think I, I, I think you touched on it earlier, um, you know, Tara. To me, the biggest excuse that I see in working with, you know, thousands of leaders over the past sort of 18 years is I'm too busy. And I think uh, Phelan touched on that as well. Um, guys, you know, time is not a resource. You know, time is not a resource. Time is a priority. And if we don't prioritize the key stuff that is going to drive our careers forward, they're not going to happen. Because, you know, 10 years from now is like a click of a fingers. So the biggest, the biggest excuse that I see is, I'm too busy. Mark, I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do it next week. You know, you've got to start doing it today. Because, I mean, when, when we talk about building a personal brand, it's, it's, it's not a choice. I mean, it, it, it's brand or be branded. So whether, you know, it's not a case of, well, I'm going to go out and build one. You already have one. People have a perception of you. People will talk about you in a certain way. What personal, what building your own personal brand does is it puts you in, in charge of how people talk about you. But you've got one anyway. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't have the time to do this, other people are going to make that up for you anyway. So to me, it is something that. And going back, you know, to me, it is probably the biggest. I mean, I stumbled over this probably around, you know, seven, eight years ago. Um, it is something that it, it is, if somebody said to you, Mark, if there's one thing that you would have wanted to know about at the start of your career, you know, when you, it would be about developing a personal brand, my own personal brand. 
The, the other thing as well, um, Mark, and I think you're spot on there um, with that. We have to take the time in order to open up and, and get rid of some of those limiting factors that you spoke about. But what about as well, fear? Fear keeps coming up here. Imposter syndrome, uh, fear of what others will think, the notions, idea. I see Jackie nodding there. What would you say to that, Mark, before we go on to this next question? Yeah, again, I mean, the biggest, I mean, the biggest self-limiting belief I would, I, I would see, and, and that goes down on the left-hand side there, or the right-hand side there, would be, um, you know, that lack of confidence, that imposter syndrome, that, uh, you know, and, and to me, it's just, you know, it, it just, we got to do it. I mean, what's the worst thing can happen? What's the worst thing can happen? Because to me, if we try something and it works, great. We learn from it, we move on. If we try something and it doesn't work, you know, we're more experienced, we gain something and we move on. I and I think that. we've got to get over ourselves. A lot of us worry about what other people think about us, but I don't want to burst anyone's with bubble tonight, but nobody's thinking about you. <laughs> we're, all thinking about, we're all thinking about ourselves. And I say that Absolutely. in group sessions. I mean, when you know, when you walk away this evening, you know, you'll only think about what you, you know, what was relevant to you. You'll remember nothing else that anyone else said. So I think we need to get over ourselves. You know yeah. that people are not thinking about us. We're I all thinking that. about ourselves. I think we all love that, and we know it. And at the end of the day, we have these human qualities, and we all have them. So if we can just get that into our head, it would help us get over some of these obstacles. And um, let's move on there. So why bother creating a personal brand for myself? So we know we've spoken about it. We've listened to you, Mark. Let's have a look at some of these answers here. What do you think of those? Yeah, I think I think I think there's some excellent. As I say, we've obviously got. Some pretty, uh, you know, excellent people on this, um, on this. Uh, very yeah. honest. I love it. Yeah, really. Yeah, really. So basically, people are, are you know, they're, they're telling us why. And it's, it's great. So we're going to move on to that in a minute. As in, they're talking about the career growth. So it's almost the opposite to the last one. These are the reasons to just go for it. So that's where. Yeah. We're at, which is but I think, it's, you know, even even beyond career growth, I think a personal brand is much more than just career. A personal brand is nearly a life choice. This is the way I want to live. This is the key qualities that I want to put across. This is the way I want people to say about me. So it's not job specific or it's not, um, you know, company specific. This is, you know, to me, it's a way of living. And, you know, it's the way that I want to. And but again, I go back to that confidence. If you know this is what you get when you get me. And that to me is the essence of a personal brand. I this is what you get when you get me. Right. And we all have phenomenal qualities that we don't. You know, we don't see, we don't hold that mirror for ourselves to see what we have. Excellent. I love that, Mark. And I've scribbled it down. Jackie, could, you want to come in there? Before I just we move wanted on to, to add Jackson. something there because there's a lot of talk about notions and there's a lot of talk about um, what you offer. And there's also a piece around, um, you know, myself and Phelan have, you know, have had different career paths. Um, Phelan has, has spent a good chunk of his career in PwC. But in the world going forward, um, you know, people aren't going to spend arguably that amount of time in one organization uh, because of the way the world is. And so that's why personal brand is so important because if you're, if you keep on focusing on the, the busy and not urgent um, and not seeing your brand as being part of what you have to do every day, you'll arrive at the next cycle, whatever it may be in the world of work, and you won't know what your brand is and you'll be trying to struggle to get yourself out there. So for me, it's like, you know, you figure out who you are and what it is you want to represent, whether, you know, as Mark says, what you bring to the table. And then the different roles you occupy, you align with the organization objective for that period of time. But your brand is your brand and you take it with you everywhere you go. And I think that's really important um, in the world of work that is emerging in the last five or six years. That is less about the job for life or the long term uh, career in one organization. It's about working in multiple organizations and changing your career. I mean, you know, the you know, my daughter's 21. She's going to change her career five times in her lifetime, at least. So, you know, it's about that. That's what you have to keep at your front of mind, I think. Excellent. Just, but just the point, sorry, point, yeah. I do think it's about enjoying your career as well. And I think personal brand is, is one of the ways you navigate your career into the things you want to do. Uh, and I think that that's actually really important as well. Yeah, just something here we're talking about the skills and that. Um this is where the this is where the, the PMI will throw me out. Um <laughs> I mean it, it's and this was mentioned earlier on. I mean, a study done by the Carnegie Foundation a number of years ago, they spent a million dollars and, and four years looking at what constitutes workplace success. 
And I think, you know, for project managers, I think that's really where technical skills and people skills collide. I mean, I think they, they collide together. But ultimately what they said was 15% of a person's success is due to their technical skills. And I'm in no way demeaning people's technical skills because if you don't have the technical skills, you would not be sitting on this today, probably. You would not be in your role um, as a project manager. But what they said was 80% of our success in business, and I believe in life as well, is due to our ability to communicate with others and influence other people. And to me, for a lot of people in the room, you know, when you're looking at the brand, I mean, you know, what, whatever you want that brand to be, you've got to definitely encompass here and work on you know, a lot of this stuff because, and, and I believe that that 85% is actually rising. And again, I go back to that question about that somebody, an excellent question. How do I get from being a project manager to a project leader? And this is a here guys, you know, these are learnable, learnable skills. These people skills, leadership are learnable skills uh, there. So again, a lot of people be interested in what people think about that. 15% is due to our technical skills, 85% is due to our people leadership skills. Well, well, Mark, from a from yeah. a PMI perspective, I'm not going to throw you out of the room, but yeah. <laughs> I think, and I think Phelan will back this up, and because he mentioned it when he was chatting about his career, um, you know, as a project manager, there's a certain level of skill or knowledge you require, which is either based on methodology, PMI, IPMA, whatever it may be, whatever agile DA, whatever it is, right? That's your technical competence. I think Phelan would agree that as you get to get those more complex projects, yeah. having that technical competence is a absolute, we know you have it. We're not even going to question that. Mm, yeah. What then becomes really important is your communication, your stakeholder and your leadership. I mean, Phelan mentioned it, but it's not, it's not, it's it's not about management it's about leadership and that's the bit that aligns with what you said you know from your 85 percent from that organization we're not it's what i call the art and the science of project management right. and, and you need both and yeah, yeah. you need both Absolutely. I want to just reference back, Jackie, to your mentor, who's actually here with us this evening, yeah, Terence yes. Terence O'Donnell. And one of the points that you highlighted as well that he did say earlier is about that importance of set, staying on the self-assured side, as yes. opposed to the cockiness side, which you've reiterated there, Mark. But a question, another question coming in here. How do you develop your personal brand with uh, and not upset your current employer let's say for example you're a project manager not working with just one company if they see you developing that personal brand and um, how can they not see that as a sign that your attention is elsewhere um well well, 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 well for me i mean any any good leader that would see uh, one of their team developing as being a threat i mean maybe that's not the guy you want to be working for and yeah. um, because to me i mean if people develop the personal brand, I mean, they're, they're honing in on where they're strongest, they're honing in on the stuff they enjoy the best and where they're going to give the most value. Um, so to me, I, I mean, the personal branding is a win-win for the organisation as well as the individual. Um, so I, I think if someone's working for a leader that sees someone as a threat that's developing that, you know, maybe you got to ask yourself whether that's the person that I want to work with that's going to develop or help me develop my career and brand going forward. I love that. Would you all yeah. agree that, sorry, so, Dave. Sorry, I was just going to add, like I couldn't agree more with Mark. At the end of the day, people need to develop in their careers and need to develop skills, and this is a core skill, and then any responsible leader will see that. It's similar with the, the kind of cocky versus self-assured thing. I, like, I think really probably a core message that all three of us uh, panelists have been giving is there's a need just to focus on this. It is a tool in your toolbox that is often neglected um, and you know I, I coach people mentor people whatever language you want to use but the amount of times I've had somebody start with saying this is really really important you meet them two months later what have you done oh just nothing you know I haven't done anything on this didn't have time so so you know some of it's just about focus similarly some of it's about celebrating successes rather than project managers are terrible for being people who come into the room and everything's red on the dashboard and you know you got to do more it's about putting balance in that and you know without being cocky about it saying this is what we've done and this is what we've done as a team really really well as a project team these are the things we need to focus on you'd be amazed Tara how many project managers go in and only give you half of that story um, and then I suppose the, the other thing that, that we can do in terms of personal brand is 
we're actually really privileged. Project managers tend to have amazing access to people to develop relationships and develop networks. And very often we don't do it because we're so task driven. So, so I, like, I don't see the need for a personal brand to compete with your career in an organization or move somewhere else. And I don't see personal brand, although I know it's probably a little bit of an Irishism that, you, you know, we don't like, you, you know, talking about the good things we've done. Um, I don't see it as needing to be contrived or cocky. It's actually just bringing balance into the conversation sometimes. Dom made a great point there. He said, um, brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Yes. Would you agree, yeah. Mark? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what we want. I mean, to, to, to me, that's the, that, that's a lot of the essence. Um, uh, uh, Don's point there is that, you know, we, we want people talking about us the way we want them to talk about us. Um, you know, in, in in the room, like like for me, you know, it's about energy. It's about practical. You know, it's about focusing people and it's about holding people accountable. So when I'm not in the room, that's what I want people to be saying about me. And if they're not saying that, well, then I'm not selling my brand well enough. Um okay. I love that. I'm going to start flying through next. We've made a promise to everybody to get out on time. We've loads of questions, which is great. So I'll do our fly through. Great one in here for all of you, which is I'm joining in two here. Very early stages of their career, this project manager. Um, I won't give their name because uh, they're looking for advice here. And they're saying uh, they're in a, working for somebody for three years. They really, truly love what they do and would want to become a successful project manager. Any advice? So advice for people in the early stages of their career and also mentoring. Are you mentor, ment reverse mentoring? I know you all have mentors, but are you also mentoring? So advice that you would give your mentees, which you can share with people listening now. No pressure. So for, from my perspective, in terms of early on your career, um, it is about uh, meeting people, learning from people. It is also about um, plugging into um, where the knowledge is, I suppose, is the way I would look at it, you know, so, so um, plugging into like one of the earlier ones for me was plugging into the Centre of Project Management in UL, was plugging into the PMI, was plugging into the IPMA, now it's like with PMI and their like their their journey into Agile is plugging into all of that. So some of that, uh, that is about acquiring the landscape you're in. So you have a responsibility from a knowledge perspective to do that. If you're earlier on in career, um, if you're in an organization, I would ask, uh, like I would try and build a relationship with someone who you want to like. So if you're a if you're on a project team, you want to be a project manager, maybe reach out to the project manager and see if they mentor or let you shadow them to see what the aspects of the role are like. And the same is true if you're a project manager, you want to be a program manager, program manager, portfolio manager. The same thing, can I have an opportunity to follow you for a day to run meetings? I mean, we've done that with our interns on grad programs that we've taken in, summer interns and grad programs. So there's an opportunity to do that. Um, if you're earlier on in your career and you want to get into project management, that project support role is very good where you get to have a full view of the landscape of the project but supporting it from a full admin perspective which gives you a view of what it's all about without having the responsibility so it gives you a really good uh, signpost for your career about whether it's something you want to get into or not and um, the reverse mentoring thing I think is really interesting and um, certainly uh, it's something I've learned from the last couple of years the grads coming out of our college are phenomenally mm -hmm. educated well-rounded you know socially digitally native mm -hmm. and we've lots to learn from them so keep your mind open to that because that's a two-way street and that's the way it should be Love it. And Phelan, no doubt you have a lot of advice on this, given your role in the company in PwC. Yeah, like, like on, on the early, early career, I think probably two points. One, um, you know, and probably a bit of a plug for, for the PMI here, but, but, but learn your trade and, and develop that technical skill set. It is invaluable for the rest of your career, even if you stop being a project manager. The skill set that you will have learned will make you be more effective, but you do have to invest in learning that skill set. The second thing I'd say, which is just probably a really practical one, but ask to be in the room. So very often projects will have a whole lot of work done and then it will get presented and discussed in steering committees. It will get, you, you know, action somewhere else. And, and sometimes when people are a little bit more uh, early in their career, they don't make the room. 
and it's usually out of thoughtlessness rather than a deliberate snub. Um, so one of the things I, I'd always advise my teams is, you know, there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't be in that steer code. Okay, you mightn't be the one giving the CEO advice, uh, but, but there's no reason you shouldn't be in the room because you have a role in the project uh, and, and that should be able to be accommodated. Sometimes it can't, but it, it's a really simple one. But it, it's, a, it's a great learning just to, to see those steering committees and those type of rooms and, and how decisions are being made. And it makes you more effective when you're actually feeding up into them in, into the future. On reverse mentoring, exactly like Jackie said, yes, um, we have a huge amount we can learn uh, through mentoring. It's absolutely a two-way street. Excellent. And I'm sure uh, in, in, as a partner in PwC with your teams, there's, there, you've had many opportunities with the graduates co coming in, obviously, um, in previous times, and then obviously with your own teams, as, as Jackie said, the young people coming in and the graduates, the digital natives, there's a lot of skills there that the rest of us, not so digitally native, can pick up and learn from too. Um, yeah, well, well, if I could reverse that and just give yeah. some advice to to those who are project managers who are who are working with with grads, I never fail to be amazed at how much somebody coming out of college can do. Uh, and I think sometimes institutionally, and I, you know, I work in most large corporates, institutionally sometimes we box them in, and you know, it's when you've done that you can do this, and 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 we we we'll, we'll build you up in our corporate image. It's not a good idea. You know, there, there's such raw talent and new skills being learned in college. And, and yes, it's, you, you know, it's about harnessing that. Um, but if I could turn it on its head, I would say to the project managers, you know, trust these guys a bit. They won't disappoint you in most cases. I, I think, uh, Phil, it's correct, Tara, because um, I think if you think about it, they probably have uh, more access to latest management thinking and what's going on and the, and the latest thought leadership in certain areas than maybe we have. So you have to keep your mind open to that to ideas and what they can bring to the table because that's part of developing you and that lifelong learning piece as well. Absolutely. You know? And it keeps yeah. coming up with the three of you all the way through. Um, uh, and Mark, somebody's asking, and I know we're running out of time here, but somebody's asking for the template. <laughs> so uh, no pressure, but people would like you to share your template uh, for, from this evening. With yeah, I can send that on. Yeah, I can send that on to um, I can send that on to Katrina, and people can uh, can have that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so, if anybody wants anything else, now is the time to ask Phelan, Jackie, and Mark while they're all here, and Katrina. Um, so, what well, before we? There was get... one great question. Just go go down a little bit, Tara, about yes. how do you how do you you know the, the challenge with um with marketing marketing your personal brand and and selling yourself. Yeah, maybe just a couple of points on that. I mean. To me, guys, we can do all of this, but if we don't, um, if we don't sell ourselves here, guys, you know, it's like, um, you know, weeding at a girl in the, in the dark. I mean, you know, <laughs> nobody sees it by yourself, so you got to switch the light on if you want to make an impact. Or a boy. And some some things here, guys, for key stakeholder um, selling yourself is, um, guys, developing your presentation influencing skills. To me, this is worth more than its weight in gold. You know, any work I do with leaders. I get them on their feet presenting. Because the reality in life is, guys, people that present well, what's their perception of them? They're intelligent. They come across. They know what they do. People that don't present well, we have the opposite. Now, I'm not saying that's fair because it's not fair, but life is not fair. If life was fair, Elvis would be still alive and all the impersonators would be dead. So developing presentation skills. Uh, other ones is um, have a positive can-do attitude. You know, be enthusiastic. And again, guys, that's something we can do pretty easy. Have an attitude of gratitude. You know, thanking people costs absolutely nothing. Um, also, make your boss look good. Make your yeah. boss look good. I mean, that's one great way. Your boss is your number one key stakeholder. Uh, make your boss look good. And also log your achievements and your accomplishments. I'm amazed at the amount of people that don't log their achievements and their accomplishments. Because when you do that, that helps us here. And it helps us here. So maybe that's just some small tips. Mark, before you sit, I think this is a nice one. Um, advice for PMs later in career, early 50s. Is it too late? Now, guys, I think this is nearly for everybody. Not They're not just, I don't think they're saying they just started as a project manager later, but I think it's never too late for any sort of changes, development or lifelong learning. No, I mean, I I, I, I met a lady, uh, I, I woke a lady there about, about two years ago. And um, she was changing career and she was excited. She was energized. She was focused. 
she was 74 years of age. So, you know, <laughs> to me, age is, 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 is only a number. I mean, you know, I've seen people, you know, getting the car out of the garage, um, you know, when they're, you know, 50, 60, 70. I mean, it's never too late to have goals that are going to focus you, energize you and excite you. And, you know, I think, you know, if somebody is 50, it doesn't matter what's happened previously in their lives. You know, you know, remember, when we're looking at what do you get when you get me, I mean, learning experiences, bad experiences can be phenomenal learning experiences and wisdom that we can we can share with people. So somebody in their 50s, you know, to me, that's a young person. Someone in their 50s, um, <laughs> definitely this model, uh, you know, will hold. And I would massively encourage and look back on what skills did you learn? What lessons did you learn? What accomplishments did you do? What massive failures did you have that Jen, you can impart and build into your brand? I couldn't say, I, I, could, I was going to say, I couldn't say it better. I just agree with everything you said there, Mark. And even about Elvis, we have a one minute, if we could wrap up of, of, for everybody of a key take home for everybody who's with us uh, now, before we go, um, Jackie, if we could start with you, I know you want to say a couple of words at the end, but just a key take home from today, from International Project Management Day. So I think for me, it's, it's two things. It's your network, your network, your network. <laughs> and that's because you need to have people around you. As Phelan says, it's a tough job. You want to be able to sense check and have sounding boards and get input so that you can, you're not on your own or living in your head all the time. And then the second uh, piece to support that is plug into the knowledge areas and make yourself that lifelong learner. That's where, that's where the added value and you won't end up feeling like you're in your 50s and it's too late because it's never too late. Love it. Thanks, Jackie. Phelan? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with two as well. Seems to be the magic number. Um, so, so two things. One, you know, don't focus on your project to the extent that you don't focus on anything else, such as your project brand or, or, or your personal brand and other things. And then the second thing is enjoy it. it. You know, project management gives you great access to great projects and it can be really, really rewarding if you choose to enjoy it. So maybe what you think so. I love it. And that actually addresses a query that Charles had earlier. Great. And Mark? Yeah, for me, it's, um, you know, to me, I'm going to go back to my original first point, which was, you know, get that car out of the garage. Life is too short not to be doing stuff that excites us, energizes us. And, and I think we have a phenomenal bunch of people here. And just on that, um, on that, you know, 50 odd year old guy that, 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 that put that question in, if he wants to give me a call, I'll be happy to have a chat with him because if he's going to be on this, He's here at, uh, you know, whatever, eight o'clock, half eight in the evening. This is a guy that his car is already out of the garage. So, you know, if he can, you know, my number's there. Give, give, give me a buzz. We'll have a chat. And I'd say we'll have a very interesting chat on that. But I would it just say... It might be a woman, Mark. It might be a woman. Yeah, well, or a woman or a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but definitely get that car out of the garage, I would say. Very good, great advice. And that's advice as well for Andy. So we're talking about knockbacks and getting back up again. That addresses that. And Garoad again about addressing your personal brand. Guys, thank you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure. I have loved, as I said to you, off camera and on camera, same answer. I've loved talking to you. I've loved preparing this evening. I think and hope that for everybody who has logged on this evening, they've gone away with not just a bit of a toolkit for developing their personal brand, but with those inspirational stories that both Jackie, Phelan, you've shared from your careers, the challenges and Mark, how to go forward now with that personal brand toolkit that you're gonna send on to everybody after this as well. And terms of your template so thank you so much Jackie thank you so much Phelan thank you so much Mark and Katrina working away like the swan the legs go 90 uh, under the water and cool and calm and collected um, above board thank you so much I hope everybody has enjoyed themselves Jackie you'd like to come in there and yes, say I a couple of words um, absolutely and thank our lovely so sponsors so um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Project Foundry for sponsoring this session. Um, we, we, you know, we work very actively with our sponsors to try and deliver value for our members. And um, secondly, thank you to the 130 odd people that decided to join us tonight. A phenomenal turnout, we're really pleased. Please do give us your feedback because this is our first, I suppose, foray into a, a virtual live panel discussion as much as we can in, um, in this kind of environment. So we'd be really interested in knowing whether 
that this is something that works and you'd like to see it uh, periodically going forward. And lastly, I'd like to thank uh, the panelists, Phelan as always for your unwavering support in the project management community. Really appreciate it. Mark, thank you so much calling in personal favours for you to share your story with mm -hmm. us tonight. Really appreciate it. And Tara, it's been my lifelong, it's been my lifelong challenge since I met you to have you involved in a PMI chapter <laughs> event. And tonight we tick the box. So thank you for your energy and enthusiasm. I'm just getting that emoji, this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Love thank you very much. Thanks, again. Katrina. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.